Colonel Harry, Coach John Tompkins here. Dave Jansen out of Gresham, Oregon. And Dennis Davis, formerly Gresham, now living in Las Vegas. Let's go down to the referee, Steve Mazzagato, right, for the instructions. Give us a good, clean, fair fight. You need to obey my commands, protect yourself at all times. Now hook them up. This has got the makings of being a big war here tonight. Both guys coming out originally out of the Team Quest fight camp in Oregon, now training out of Extreme Couture in Las Vegas. Dennis Davis, still out in Oregon, is the opposing fighter, Jensen. And there's a little bit of, not so much bad luck between these guys, but I think that Matt Lindley, who's the head coach of the Team Quest, has a little bit of a personal issue with Dennis Davis, didn't like the way he left, and he thinks that his young stud at 3-0, Dave Jensen, is gonna come down to Las Vegas and beat Dennis in his hometown. Dennis says it's going to be a long plane ride home for Jansen when he gets beat and has to disappoint Lindley. Both these guys real scrappy, as you can see in the beginning of this fight. Um, very well-rounded fighters. Both can throw, both can grapple, uh, both have great submissions. So we'll see what happens here. I see uh, Chris Wilson in the corner of Jensen. Chris is now uh, uh, one of the main guys fighting in the UFC. Um, comes with a lot of experience as well as the, the rest of the Lindley camp. So we'll see what Jensen has to offer for Dennis Davis. The players tied up in that corner turn buckle there with the Affliction ad, July 19th, the big pay-per-view. Very similar styles from these guys, almost clones of each other with Jensen being a little bit taller and possibly a little bit stronger. Yeah, they both are, uh, both are active fighters though. You can see uh, they're both working out of the clinch game. Dennis Davis, I think, has to work on uh, getting out of the corner there. The referee breaking them up, starting it again. Another like, uh, tangle in the ropes there. Jensen likes to mix it up on the hands of Biddy. He's got a couple of exciting TKOs on his record. Nice to see Dennis Davis show a little bit of ex his experience in the hands, moving his head a little bit. Uh, he's really got to get inside that long reach of Jensen. Yeah, Jensen with about a three, three and a half inch height advantage. Both guys fighting here to catch weight of 150 pounds. Jensen working the knees from the clinch and Dennis answers back. It really almost is like mirror images. Absolutely. Dennis Davis going for the guillotine early in round number one. I'm sure Jensen has been here before, but Dennis Davis is a wizard when it comes to submissions. Back down to his feet, working the knees, pulls Jensen down to the floor. Jensen is now hand wrestling. He wants to break open that chokehold, which has just happened. Now they're in a stalemate position. And Jensen, it looked to me like he dropped to his knees to avoid the knee to the face that was coming from Dennis Davis. And I think that's a flaw in the unified rules that we fight under. I think knees to the head should be allowed. You, you see a fighter taking, a, giving up a position to negate offense by his opponent. I think it's a flaw in the rules if you can hide behind them. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously the, the, the commission and the, and the people that make these rules are putting them together because they, uh, they want to see somebody not get uh, those brutal knees to the face. But uh, you learn the game, you play the game. Another guillotine attempt here, and you see that hand. Jansen might be thinking of tapping. He's got that hand out, but I think Davis is a little bit high on the head. There. Yeah, he's high on the head. You can see how he released it, and uh, Jensen was real smart keeping his posture in that uh, that position. Now Dennis wasting a lot of energy there in, in that attempt, and finds himself in a bad position here underneath the very experienced grappler. Dennis is trying to keep uh, keep his body and head out to the side there. Jensen just passing over, uh, he's got one leg out, he's, the other one's in his half guard. The pass half guard, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna work for a choke of his own here. He's sinking it in, Dennis is smart, look at him hand wrestle, controlling that wrist. Excellent defense by Dennis Davis, he's gotta scurry and get to his feet though. You do not wanna be on your back in a position like this with a guy with long arms like Jensen. Jensen has uh, good control when it comes to the, to the ground. The ropes there, it looked like a big right hand was coming. The ropes giving a little bit of an assist there to Dennis Davis. I don't like how Dennis keeps locking up those ankles in the guard position. He's got to get back up to his feet. He's got to get out of this position. Jensen's just going to keep scoring points. Giving up his back now to Jensen is Dennis Davis. Not a good move to be in once again. He's got to make a quick scramble here, turn into him, or get up to his feet as quickly as possible. He's get his hook in there on the left side. Riding high in the back there, Davis. Excellent advertisement for the sponsors there, as you can see from that camera angle. And uh, how important are the sponsors, Sean, to these fighters? Well, you know, a lot of these guys, they make a bulk of their money on the sponsorships, and it brings money in for these guys in between fights. People forget, they say, oh, this guy gets paid this or that for a fight. But what about these months where he's not fighting, where he's training every day? Absolutely, we need those sponsors. You can see uh, 
Extreme Couture and uh, Team Quest Martial Arts Training Centers being a big part of these guys, uh, not only their training, but also in uh, part of their payday. And you'll notice, you can't see it right now, but there's a body by Benacci added on Dennis Davis. And Jake Benacci may be the senior weapon of the Extreme Couture team. We'll talk some more about him in the next round. You see here, less than 10 seconds, Davis in a bad position, and he might have given up this round. I thought he was dominant in the beginning, but a good finish by Dave Jansen. Absolutely, I'd say Jansen stole that round.